I want to talk about Cassiopeia, not the constellation. I'm talking about maintenance dare after VTD plus or minus dare Cassiopeia part two, the randomized control trial in multiple myeloma. This is by listener request. This is for a plenary session. And asking ye shall receive. So what do you need to know about this study? Of course, this is the Lancet Oncology paper. This is Cassiopeia open label randomized phase three trial part two, the maintenance portion of it. What do they do in this randomized study? Newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, mostly in Europe, getting DARA, VTD, or VTD. And if you achieved PR or better, you were eligible for the DARA maintenance portion of the study. They accrued between May 30th, 2016 and 2018. So what do I have to say about this randomized control trial? It's actually quite interesting. It's got a lot of problems in it, so that's what makes it interesting to me. Some of the classic problems in medical oncology that we have yet to deal with as a profession. Here's problem number one. When you take a fixed course of therapy and make it indefinite, the endpoint you want to show me that you improve is overall survival. It is almost too easy to improve progression-free survival by continuing active anti-cancer drugs. And what you do is you take away a treatment holiday from a patient. You need to improve overall survival or global longitudinal health-related quality of life if you want to persuade me of a maintenance strategy. And if you want to read a paper on that, I'm going to put it right up here. It's a paper I did with uh, Bishal Gaywali in Nature Reviews Clinical Oncology. But if you are willing to accept progression-free survival as the basis for a maintenance strategy, then Already, this trial's got a problem, the control arm of observation. Revlimid, at the ASCO 2016, which occurred just like five days after they started enrolling. I cannot imagine they enrolled many patients when ASCO 2016 rolled out, and McCarty and colleagues published their meta-analysis showing that LEN maintenance has a survival benefit after autologous stem cell transplantation that eventually led to an FDA approval. But those results were known just days after this trial launched. And it's hard to believe they didn't know which way the wind was blowing. At this point, it was abundantly clear lenalidomide was the standard of care maintenance therapy in this setting. And yet this trial went ahead and continued for year after year to enroll people and randomize them to observation. That is another classic problem in oncology, the delinquent control arm. And I'm going to put a link to a paper right up here that I did with Talal Halal, where we analyze quality of control arms. And then one more that I did with Mani Moyudin, where we looked at multiple myeloma control arms. So that's just one layer of the problems with DARA maintenance after VTD. The next set of problems, I think, has to do with the VTD itself. Now, obviously, that's an acceptable regimen in Europe at the time of this study, but it wasn't really the U.S. standard of care where we used VRD because it was universally believed that Revlimid was more tolerable than thalidomide. If you can afford the DARA, the daratumumab, you could afford the Revlimid. So I really wonder about this study. It's going into a place in the world where they are much more cost conscious in multiple myeloma and adding on a very costly drug. But if they were willing to spend the money on the DARA, they might've wanted to swap out the Thal for a Revlimid. The next issue I see with this study is it's quite interesting to me. Of course, it's got two randomizations, which I always love. The first randomization, the addition of daratumumab in the frontline regimen, they call it uh, induction and consolidation. It's like four plus two cycles. And then the next portion is if your PR are better, you get the maintenance randomization. And what they find very clearly, and here, it's not just a subgroup analysis. It is a highly significant subgroup by interaction statistical testing, which is that the addition of daratumumab as a maintenance drug does not work if you got dara VTD. It does have a PFS benefit if you just got VTD. So already, this is really quite interesting. It shows that DARA VTD plus more DARA maintenance is no better than DARA VTD and observation. That was a bit surprising to me. That's actually one rung below Revlimid, where Revlimid has a survival benefit even if you received it as an induction treatment. So why is this one rung below? I think we'll have to start to think biologically about this agent. Is there some saturation effect? Is there only so much DARA a person needs? And how does that influence our interpretation of current second and subsequent line randomized control trials? Should the cooperative groups be attempting to have a fixed course of DARA and then omitting DARA from some of these studies? Of course, the protocol of many of these studies was built to be DARA forever. Of course, why DARA forever? Because the company likes you to take DARA forever. The, the principal goals of myeloma clinical trials appear to be give more drugs to people sooner and keep them going for as long as possible. The goals to patients and um, impartial doctors is to use the least amount of drugs to ensure people have the longest survival and the best quality of life. And there's a fundamental tension in all the myeloma trials because none of the trials really pursue that research agenda. They just pursue the agenda of more drugs sooner indefinitely. 
And some of the ways they play the games are, of course, the control arms are inadequate, as in this case. The next way they play the game is the post-protocol therapy may be inadequate. So right now we know that PFS is improved in the VTD arm when you're randomized to DARA versus observation maintenance, which is a delinquent unacceptable maintenance even when they started enrolling. But what we don't know is whether or not the overall survival is going to be improved. But if the control arm, VTD and then observation, doesn't ever get a path to DARA, then it is very plausible that maintenance DARA in that group will improve OS. But that doesn't really reflect the, the question, which is, do you need to give maintenance DARA or can you just give it at relapse and achieve the same outcome? The trial doesn't really answer that question. So that's just a classic bias in oncology clinical trials of post-protocol care that isn't really asking the relevant question because it is beneath, I think, an acceptable standard. So beyond these points, what do I think about this study? I think this study is not really the study we need in the moment. Um, I think if you were going to spend the money on the DARA, you probably would have been using a VRD backbone. So I want to see VRD plus DARA versus VRD, but all the subsequent lines of therapy should get DARA like we do in the United States. And if I were to reflect on the entire landscape of multiple myeloma trials, I guess I would say there is tremendous amount of residual uncertainty, despite what the KOL say. We know very little about the right combinations, the right sequence. I think it is entirely debatable what the first three drugs you give somebody are, what the next regimen is. I think there are even open questions about maintenance, um, certainly this maintenance, which, you, which is bolstered based on a PFS endpoint only and the backdrop of a control arm that was unethical when the trial was run. But there are broader questions about how we could be structuring and implementing all these myeloma drugs. Could you get the same outcomes by giving fewer drugs but ensuring that post-protocol care was up to snuff, was the very best salvage drugs we had? And none of the clinical studies, I think, they all have lapses here. We're going to try to do something in this space. So those are my general thoughts on Cassiopeia. If you're in continuing a treatment indefinitely, as I showed you, you really need a endpoint like overall survival or health-related quality of life. One note about health-related quality of life. You cannot just show health-related quality of life is better like while you're running your study. You need to follow health-related quality of life for someone's entire cancer journey and show that the gains you're getting in the beginning by kicking the PFS can down the road are not offset by worse quality of life later when PFS starts coming faster and faster and faster, potentially, if OS is in fact the same. All these health-related quality of life studies, they measure health-related quality of life just for a tiny snapshot. That's not really the philosophical concept. And I'm going to show you one more paper right here by Allison Haslam where we have proven that. The next set of points, you need to have ethical control arms. You cannot randomize people to observation when you know good and well that Revlimid is in fact the standard of care maintenance therapy. And that was shown based on stronger data, PFS in meta-analysis and OS in meta-analysis. Right when you were launching your study, you barely tried to slip your study in a few days before. That is problematic. This is a game that trialists have to not play anymore. We have to refuse the company. Obviously, it's the company's best interest to go up against observation. It's easier. It's beating up a straw man. But we want people to go up against what we're actually doing in our clinics, the best available care. And I think we have some broad issues in multiple myeloma about cost. We have to ask ourselves, and if I were a European nation, I might consider an entirely different research agenda, which is asking whether or not you need to give all these drugs upfront indefinitely, or whether or not you can actually have a set of standardized sets of drugs for different lines of therapy and achieve the same overall survival. You need to run those studies yourself, Europe. The companies aren't going to help you. You need to do it without the company's help using your nationalized healthcare systems. It is the only way for any sort of control or pushback in myeloma space against the cost, of course, but also what's best for patients. I think we forget. Patients want to use the least amount of chemical products to achieve the longest OS and the best health. And the trials really not are really not addressing that question or testing it. So those are my thoughts on Cassiopeia. It is yet another study. Most interesting thing to me that I think will have implications for some of the other studies is that if you got DARA VTD, you do not benefit even on a PFS endpoint for more DARA. And that has broad implications that we need to think through and all these other usual problems. So if you like this video, you will get a lot of oncology videos on this channel and on the podcast plenary session. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, leave a message below. Until next time.